Good morning. Bo, please read the problem, and Bobby, please translate. Flippin' physics. A 17-gram donut is sitting 21 centimeters from a 14-gram mermaid. Stop, please. Um, mass of the donut is 17 grams. Mass of the mermaid is 14 grams. And the distance, let's call it X, between the two of them is 21 centimeters. Bo, please. Determine the force of gravitational attraction between the two. Force of gravity equals question mark. How does a donut have more mass than a mermaid? Mermaids are not real. They're not? Neither is the donut. Billy, what is the equation for force of gravity? Force of gravity equals mass times acceleration due to gravity. Oh, that is the equation for the force of gravity between an object near the surface of the planet and the Earth, which, which is not the force of gravity we are solving for here. We need the force of gravitational attraction between the mermaid and the donut. Yeah, we need to use Newton's universal law of gravitation. The big G equation, which is force of gravity equals big G. The universal gravitational constant. Times mass 1 times mass 2, all divided by r squared. Mr. P has made it pretty clear we should not just say the letters, we should say what they mean. You should say radius and not r. Actually, in this equation, r is not the radius. r is the distance between the centers of mass of the two objects. Uh, right, so, so the, the 21 centimeters should be labeled r, not x. Very nice. Billy, please solve the problem. Sure, we can substitute the mass of the donut and the mass of the mermaid for the two masses in the equation, and then we can plug in numbers. Uh, the universal gravitational constant uh, is... Big G is 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11 newtons times meters squared over kilograms squared. Right. Thanks, Bo. Um, so 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11 times 17 times 14 divided by 21 squared uh, is 3.59968 times 10 to the negative 11 or 3.6 times 10 to the negative 11 newtons with two significant digits. How did you do the times 10 to the on your calculator? Oh, uh, so that's the, the double E button on your calculator. So uh, 6.67 uh, and then the double E button and negative 11 means 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11. Thanks. Oh, you're welcome. Unfortunately, this is not correct. We forgot to convert to kilograms and meters. How do you know we need to do that? The units on big G. They are newtons times meters squared over kilograms squared. The values we plug into the equation need to have units that match those units. That makes sense. So if we multiply both masses times one kilogram over a thousand grams to convert to kilograms and multiply the distance by one meter over a hundred centimeters to convert to meters, and plug those new values into Newton's uh, universal law of gravitation, uh, we get, just give me a second, uh, uh, 3.59968 times 10 to the negative 13, or uh, 3.6 times 10 to the negative 13 Newtons with two significant digits. Correct. So right now, the mermaid is being pulled toward the donut with a force of 3.6 times 10 to the negative 13 newtons. This is the force from the donut on the mermaid. And the donut is being pulled toward the mermaid with a force of equal magnitude and opposite direction. This is the force from the mermaid on the donut. Notice, these two forces form a Newton's third law force pair. For every force the donut applies on the mermaid, the mermaid applies an equal but opposite force on the donut. Bobby, if the mermaid and donut are being pulled toward one another, why are they not currently moving towards one another? The maximum force of static friction must be larger than 3.6 times 10 to the negative 13 newtons, so the objects do not move. That is a great explanation. Look at the size of this force of gravitational attraction. Scientific notation is great for easily writing down numbers with lots of zeros. However, sometimes they can mask the actual size of the number. The force of gravitational attraction between the mermaid and the donut is 0 0.0000000000036 newtons. 
That is a very small force, which will definitely not overcome the force of static friction, which is acting on the objects. Another reason they are not moving is because there are all sorts of other objects near them uh, that they are being pulled towards. The mermaid, for example, is also being pulled towards the table, towards me, towards all three of you, the wall, the ceiling, and even you, the person watching this video. There are so many other forces of gravitational attraction currently acting on the mermaid, and the acceleration of an object is determined by its mass and the net force acting on the object. But what if the mermaid and the donut were the only two things which existed in the universe? Bo, what would happen then? The mermaid and the donut would slowly accelerate toward one another until they met in the middle. That's very close. They would accelerate until they meet at the center of mass of the two-object system, which would be slightly closer to the donut, because the donut has a little more mass than the mermaid. And realize, we would not be able to observe this, because then we would be in the universe, and the donut and the mermaid would be attracted to us as well. Thank you very much for learning with me today. I enjoyed learning with you.